Hi, I'm here at Liquid uh, Instruments, Australian company, and here's Ben Price to tell us all about uh, this cool looking design, Australian design and made oscilloscope and everything else. It's yes. probably 20, how many functions? So we currently have 14 different instruments. Only uh, 14? Only 14. Are there plans for more? There are plans for more to come oh, soon. Okay. <laughs> Tell us which ones you got. So currently our main ones are like this. You've got your um, oscilloscope, you've got your spectrum analyzer, mm -hmm. you've got your waveform generator, you've got your frequency response analyzer. All your basics, yep. Yeah, and then you've got like PID controllers Ooh. and also uh, like laser locking boxes and oh. uh, lock-in amplifiers wow. uh, for your photonics they're, they're measurements. They're usually very expensive. Yes. yes. And they come also with our 1000 Australian dollar units uh, built in. Which hopefully you guys might uh, send me for a teardown, yes. I think. Yes, it would be so, interesting. Yes. We also provide a system called multi-instrument mode, uh, which allows you to basically stack, I'll show you how we set it up, basically allows you to stack instruments on top of each other. So you could have a uh, wa uh, waveform generator that goes into a frequency response analyzer that say I want to see its spectrum and then I want to modulate it using a PID controller. You can then hit go all internally it will connect all of its internal signals to its inputs its outputs you can then link buses to each other uh, you can so that's Basically, doing that via analog switching within the unit? In, internally. Right. No, no need to set up cables, ethernet cables, redundancies, everything operates internally. Wow. And you can just switch instruments to whatever instrument you want. So say I now want that to be a lock-in, and I want that to be an arbitrary. <laughs> Bang, launches, don't have to change any modules, works instantly. And how, many, and how much of that functionality is inside the little baby here? So the little Moku, also has the functionality, but it only comes with uh, two channels because it's only two yep. input, two output, so you can stack two channels on top of each other. That's the same with the lab, but the Pro being a four channel in, four channel out, allows you to have four channel, uh, four instrumentation stacked on top of and each what, other. And what, what, talk of, uh, what type of uh, price range we're talking for the high end Pro? So for the high end Pro here, it starts at 15,000 US dollars. Yep. Uh, that comes with your standard five instruments, and then you can basically add on each instrument you need from ranging from about $1,000 to $2,000 an instrument depending on what it is or if you want to go full all out you can spend $25,000 US dollars and get every single instrument and when we release new instruments every 6 to 12 months depending on uh, how complicated the instrument is to make uh, you'll automatically get it uploaded onto your device. Right and what uh, markets are you selling into? So. We were designed for photonic stuff originally, so these photonic labs are using these instruments to do high accuracy uh, photonics measurements for uh, photons and things like that. We also have companies that are doing uh, high volume uh, electrical test and uh, development programs, so needing to automate uh, uh, test processes through having needing to have an oscilloscope, then a spectrum analyzer, then a waveform generator. You're basically able to write that in our API it automatically switches between each instrument. You can leave every single cable the same and it will work itself all out using Python, MATLAB, LabVIEW, C, whatever your preferred um, language was. I noticed you got a uh, digital yes, so, logic analyzer here. So our How does that work? Because you've got no digital inputs. Are so they on the back? We've got the Mocha Go, which is our um, entry level one, yep. which also comes with a digital signal in, which nice. you can uh, link to your pro or your um, lab and basically allows you to have digital triggering or digital output signals. Uh, you can do that over ethernet into each other. You could do that uh, by using an iPad for this device, a computer for this device, both on the same device. You can stack devices on top of each other. So you can have one device connected to one Moku and then you can go back to the other one and just switch between them, all on the same device. And then if you wanted to use yeah, your logic analyzer, once it launches in the uh, product I just connected to, you've got your sweep. So you can basically just create signals uh, by going in here and you can basically just like add ones and zeros and whatever the way you want to set up your uh, pattern generations and you have multiple configurations depending if you want to switch between them. But you also have 16, 16 individual bits to basically do what you need to do. That is a nice user interface. Yes. How, how long have you guys been working on the so, design of this thing, so we've when did you start? We've existed since 2014 and we launched our first product in 2015, the Moku uh, Lab. And then about three to four years ago, we launched the Moku Pro. And then about uh, two to three years ago, we launched the Moku Go. Um, 
all for separate markets, all for separate uses, uh, depending if you need super high frequency, super high bit rate, five, uh, five giga samples at 600 uh, uh, mega, megahertz for the Moku Pro, all the way down to 300 megahertz at 125 mega samples. And there's the spec, so this is the lab, this is the mid-range version? Yes, that is right. the Moku Lab, yep. yep. Okay, right, and what's the uh, price point on that one? Starts at $5,000 USD and then goes up to $10,000 for everything added into it. And Australian design and manufacture, yes. you've got your development here, yes. and they're manufactured here. Can yes. you tell us more about that? So our complete development team that do all the uh, board design, all the firmware, all the mechanical design, everything's done in our office in Canberra. We manufacture the Moku Pro virtually completely in um, Melbourne, and the Moku Go is uh, assembled completely in Melbourne. So. We're trying to be basically as Australian dependent as possible, trying to advocate for Australian manufacturing, Australian design, because we are one of the best countries in the world at doing this kind of stuff, so why Fantastic. not? Fantastic, so there was no price, because this is into the higher end yes. uh, price market. Yes. Um, there was no pressure to manufacture in China at all? No, definitely not, because no? we, we know that we can still, we still undercut a lot of people, such as someone like uh, National Instruments that have those module systems, which you need to buy each individual module. We can do that all for one box. Don't need to buy upgrades. Don't need to buy things. It's all software based. So why not buy the better system? And uh, a lot of people are going to compare with this with the analog discovery. Yes. Maybe not in terms of that, but in terms of functionality in software. Yes. Um, how do you reckon yours competes with the analog discovery? <laughs> My personal humble opinion, I reckon our user layout and user functionality is much more intuitive. It right. just can you show us the oscilloscope, for example? Yeah, so our oscilloscope here uh, launches simply. So this is for the Moku Go demo, so the little unit. So you've got your simple channel A, your channel B. Uh, you've got uh, it's your coupling, your ranges. Uh, you can do your time base simply, your trigger simply. We've got uh, quite intuitive symbols, so understandable in all languages. Our device also can be in uh, six different languages as well. Uh, you've got your measurements that you can add. So say I want to add a frequency, all the different ones you would ever want to know. It's all there nicely laid out for each of your channels. And then we've also got a built-in multimeter that just sits there. I was there. going to ask about multimeter functionality because this is a 16-bit, yes. it's a 16-bit native, 16-bit analog to digital. Yes. Right, yep. got it. So but, but I think the spec says it goes up to 18 bit. Yes, so our Moku Pro can operate 10 times 18 bits. So the 10 times is for our low uh, for our low speed AC, and we've got the 18 bits for our high speed AC. And we also have a patent, uh, patented system which basically allows us to blend our low speed and high speed ADCs together. So instead of when you're sweeping for a full frequency range, instead of getting a skip, we have a p basically clean. Uh, frequency uh, sweep through the entire band from 6,000 megahertz all the way down to 10 hertz without any jumping, any weird noises and stuff nice. like that throughout our like, patented blending system. Nice. So the low end's a thousand Aussie bucks, well, you yep. said? Yes. How much in Yankee bucks? That's about uh, 600, 600 bucks. Yep. About 600 US. Not bad at all. So, oh, that, that's hefty. Yeah, that's it's got, hefty. It's got, it's got stuff to cool down. So this is the top of the right. range one. So this one costs about 800 USD. Oh, okay. And right. this has also programmed. What is the difference? What is the difference between uh, the low end and high end? Low in end. That? Uh, so the base model doesn't come with any programmable DCs. Oh, okay. But, and then right. the high end one comes with four individual programmable DC outputs. And so what sort of power level we're talking? Uh, oh, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. I'm sorry about that. That's but I right. think they'd be got... switching converters, obviously, and. Yeah, I think, what, I, think, I, think voltage, do, I think we do. I think we do up to about ten volts at about 0.1 amps. So for simple, like okay, right. It's just for powering basic circuits. Yeah, for yeah, simple stuff. So if you yeah, want to, like, say, you want to design a little Arduino circuit, yep. you want to measure what your capacitor is measuring. So you can power it off your unit and also measure the signals all at the same time. Can you feed the function gen into the power supply and ramp the power supply? Because Analog Discovery can do that, so that's one of their little uh, neat things that they can do. I'm going to say that's a yes, yep. or are you tried it for the first time? I think, well, <laughs> so we're trying to 
add, what do we want to do? A function gen into the power supply so that the power supply is mod, you know, you can ramp the power supply, for example. Function generator. So, yeah, we've got waveform generator into our. So, will this allow you to join things if it can't do it? Like, so, if it knows it can't do it? So, I assume we can. Oh, God, it's been a while since I've used <laughs> I'm this. putting you on the spot. I know. Yep, totally. Uh, Pressure. Oh, yeah, fur, fur filter builder. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Oh, sorry, I've just <laughs> put me on the spot here. I have. It's a humble uh, mechanical engineer. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, uh, you, you are a mech engineer. Yeah, so, so, yeah, yep. no, so you're probably the wrong person to ask. <laughs> yeah, I can't I work know. it out right now. But <laughs> all right. Well, if That's we, all right. If we do send it off to you, we'll send yep. you a, basically a full instruction of how different things work. And we have all the information anyone would need on our website. It cool. steps you through how every instrument works, how every instrument can communicate with yep. each other, and what limitations you could have and what... Um, and Great. what it could work for, your your needs, and what you want to test. So what have you uh, worked on in terms of the mechanical uh, side so, of things? Housings and Yeah, stuff? so Mocha Pro was kind of my main uh, um, task things. So basically all the internal, how shielding works for uh, outlook right. front ends, thermal, so making sure everything's stable for calibration, noise levels, so the fans, uh, the fan vibration doesn't couple into. Ah, uh, yes, of uh, course, yes. yes. Doesn't couple into yep. uh, your photonics measurements, all stuff like that. Yep. Uh, how this thing is assembled itself at the manufacturing line, so we have a consistency of quality. Uh, and when you're spending this much money on a device, you want to make sure it's yep. pristine. So nice it's and sure. sm schmick and polished and everything. So there's a small fan in there. Is that loud? Yeah. So we've got two uh, twenty two fifty two mil fans at the back here. Yep which are coupled into a two dozen thermal sensors across the entire thing. Two dozen? Yeah. So, wow, you're serious. So on the, low, <laughs> on the low power and high speed, low power and high power amplifiers, each of them have a thermal couple for each channel of the uh, outputs. We've got one's uh, thermal couple for each of the boards, each of the main chips for different parts of the FPGA, for everything has it. So we basically have a, a uh, proprietary algorithm that communicates with all of them and works out where the fan speed measurement should be should be to keep calibration at its optimum so you get the best results. Okay, so you're almost trying to uh, temperature um, stabilize it, yes. almost. Well, because for calibration, it's unlike a PC. You don't want it yep. to be as cold as possible. Yeah, you yeah. want it to be that temperature. So right. it also allows us to have a lot of headroom. For example, this can operate in 45 degree ambient. Yep. So say you want to server mount it, which you can. Yeah, in of a course. server, it's 45 degrees in yep. there. You don't really care if it's loud in there, so the fans can ramp exactly. all the way up and it can keep itself running at the uh, correct operating temperature. Right. So this fits in a uh, rack, does yes. it? The standard 19 inch rack? Yes, um, standard so 19 inch yep. rack. Exactly 2.5 2 uh, yep. U high. Yep. It comes with server rack ears, so you just bolt them. Oh, things. okay, there's your bolt, okay. Yep, thing there's slides your in. Holes. Yep. All goes together. Very nice. All right. Thank you very much, Excellent. Ben. That's awesome. Thank you, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers.